Hallelujah. We do barak, Abba Yahweh, for all things. For those that have gathered here with us at Teshua, those of you that are listening by via of live stream, Yahweh Barak, you all. Hallelujah. I want to start somewhat where I left off a few weeks ago concerning the dividings of the fire of Almighty Yahweh. Yahweh, he divides the flame of fire. That being the trials that we are tested with, Israel. There are those of us that go through small things, but understanding that these are not the trials that Torah is talking about. And I'm talking about the small things, Israel. There are those that are dealing with hardships, circumstances that are much more grave than what we hear experience, Yisraya. There are those for the name of Almighty Yahweh are stricken, they're beaten. Are we stricken and beaten, Yisraya, upon our bodies? But yet, there's a type of trial that we must endure, even in this spiritual warfare, if I must say. But Yahweh, he has equipped us with everything that we need, Yisraya, everything that we need. So should we fail as a soldier? Should we fail as being uh, warriors in this army of the kingdom? We should not, because we have all that we need. We have all we need, Israel. Hallelujah. So I do want to begin in Kephah chapter 1, verse 1. And as I venture on this message tonight, Israel, I do want to express um, in Daniel about the circumstances of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. This is one of Zakain, um, Benjamin's favorite chapters to, to uh, teach and to preach from. But I want to begin in Kepha. Hallelujah. I'm going to be dealing, I will deal with the image, the selam, the image. I somewhat, when I pronounce that word in the Hebrew, it somewhat sounds like selam or sell them, or sell it. Is that not what this nation does with their imagery, with their pictures, with their words, with their televisions, with the news broadcasts? They try to sell you anything. It doesn't matter what it is. And we as a people, as a nation, the whole world, they buy it. When Yahweh instructs us to buy of him gold, did I not talk about the gold the last time I was up here, the purification of the gold? He said to buy of me gold that has been tried in the fire. But what this nation does in the world, in the media, they put anything out there. It doesn't have to be factual. It don't have to be true. And yet we as a people, we buy it. So they sell us anything and we buy it. Any lie, we buy it. Hallelujah. Kephah chapter 1 verse 1. This is something where I left off Israel the last time. Kepha, an apostle of Yahshua HaMashiach, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galata, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of Yahweh our Abba. Do we believe we're elect Yisrael by the foreknowledge? What is that? Before things came into be. Yahweh knew his people, his children, his bane. To be made Kodash of the Ruach to obedience and the sprinkling of the Dom of Yahshua HaMashiach, the free unmerited pardon to you and Shalom be multiplied. Blessed be Yahweh, the Abba of our master Yahshua HaMashiach, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten unto us again a lively hope by the resurrection of Yahshua HaMashiach from the dead. Was not Yahshua HaMashiach risen from the dead? Did not his Torah at a time, Yisraeli, had to face trials, tribulations, just for a time, but yet it came forth pure. His gold, pure. A gold that has been tried in the fire, Yisraeli. This is Yahshua HaMashiach, when the resurrection of Yahshua HaMashiach from the dead. Verse 4. To the inheritance incorruptible, its gold in its finest state, 
in this realm, Israel, it's corruptible. It can be corrupted. We have, a, as a nation, has been corrupted, Israel. That's why it is, it is important for us to go through the trials, to go through the fire, to be put into the furnace that we may be tried, that anything that is corruptible may come forth, be pulled out of us, Israel. He says, to an inheritance that is incorruptible and undefiled, that fades not away. That's what I want, Israel. That's what Yah has given us. It says reserve. Where? In the Shemayams for you. Hallelujah. Who are kept by the power of Yahweh through Imuna, faith, through salvation, the Yashua Yashu HaMashiach, ready to be revealed in the Yom Akarith in the last time. Are we in the long, last time, Yisrael? Are we waiting for that revelation to be revealed in our nefesh, in our lev? Hallelujah. We are in the Yom Akarith the last time, in the last days, the last time. He says in verse 7 that the trial of your imuna be much more precious than of gold that perishes. So the trials that we go through, the tribulation, the test, they're much more precious than this gold that America places wealth on, that the nations place its wealth on the world that perishes. That says a lot to me, Israel. What would it profit a man to gain the riches of this world but lose his nephesh or lose his soul, Israel? He said, through it, being tried with fire, might be found to the praise and the honor and splendor at the appearing of Yahshua HaMashiach, hallelujah, whom having not seen, we are have him. And whom though you, though in, him, in whom, though you know, you see him not, yet you believe. And we rejoice, Yisrael, with joy, unspeakable, and full of praises. Hallelujah. So in this joy unspeakable, we must understand, it's during the trials. It's in the tribulation. It's in the furnace. It's in the purification. It's when the heat is turned up seven times, Israel. That's when we should have the joy. That's when we should praise Almighty Yahweh. Not when it seems like things are just smooth sailing, but when things are rough and tough times. And what seems to be bad times. We should give Yahweh praise in all things. In verse 9, receiving the end of your imuna. Have we received that, Israel? Have we received the end? Have not Yahweh begun this work? Was not Adam perfect in every aspect? Sure he was. Yes, there was a trial, there was a path that Yahweh put him through, but it's all in his plan, Israel. A perfect plan. So he started things out perfect. The days, the numbering of the days, the Olam and the earth, the making of the beasts of the field, all perfect. And it pleased him. And in the latter end, don't you know it's going to be the same? It's going to please him. It's going to go according to his plan, to his foreknowledge, Israel. Even the end of your imuna. Mama, think about that. What we go through. What we endure, to the end of your move now, even the salvation of your nephesh, of your soul. What is that? It's everything that lies within this fleshly body, Israel. The end of it. Pure, full, a sweet-smelling savor in the nostrils of Almighty Yahweh. That's what he desires. That's what he wants. But it takes the trials it takes the fire. It takes the furnace, Yisrael. Turn with me to Isaiah 43, chapter 43, verse 1. It takes the fire. And Yahweh, he is the one that divides the flame, Yisrael. Hallelujah. He knows what he's doing. Let us commit our nephesh, our souls, our bodies in his hands. 
He has taken care of us thus far, Yisrael. We have come this far by Imuna. So let us continue. Hallelujah. Let us continue. Let us continue running this race until the end, Yisrael. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1. But now, thus saith Yahweh that has created us, O Yaakov, and he that formed you, O Yisrael, he says, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have saved you. I have made you whole. I have placed you in the place of protection. I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name, he says. You are mine. Hallelujah. Don't you know we are the riches? We are the wealth of Almighty Yahweh. Don't you know he has invested much, much patience, much time, endurance, ahava, judgment? What? For what? For us. Because we are his. He said, you are mine, verse 2. When you pass through the waters, did I not talk about the waters at the beginning of this teaching concerning the sevenfold voices of Almighty Yahweh? He said, I will be with you. Even in the floods, when it seems like the enemy come in as a flood, does he not, Israel? Yes. Does he not transform himself into that trial? Yes. Hallelujah. And through the rivers, not only through the floods, but the rivers, the forces that push against us. He said, they shall not overflow you. Hallelujah. Was Noah overflowed by the flood? Did not Yahweh make a way for him, an ark of safety? Hallelujah. Was not Noah and those that was with him, did not they belong to Almighty Yahweh? And he took care of them. Did not he face trials? Sure he did. They were mocked, ridiculed. What in the world? What, what is a flood? Who said what to you, Noah? He was mocked, but yet he stayed the course. What made him move? Was it the fear? Ahava, reverence, it's all the same, Israel. Not only through the floods or through the rivers. He said, but when you walk through the fire. Hallelujah. How many of us are ready to walk through the fire? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I should, I should see more hands than that, Israel. Come on now. Hallelujah. I know what we think in our flesh. I, I don't want to go through trials. I don't want to be hurt. My body, my mind. I, I don't, this is the purification of Almighty Yahweh. Did he not say he would go with us through the fire? That alone should give us the moon out to know that Yahweh, he has taken care of us this far, Israel. We know we're headed to the furnace. We're not going to bow down to the image, the Salem of this world. Hallelujah. But we're going to stand on the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, and we're not going to let anything deter us. We're not going to let anything stop us. A warrior don't let anything stop him. He sees the arrows. The fiery darts going back and forth. He's not worried about what's behind him, but he looks forward. He's willing to give his life. Why? Because he understands the purpose. Do we understand our purpose, Israel? Do we should go forth? Hallelujah. In the power and in the amuna of Yahshua HaMashiach. So he says, when you walk through the fire, he says, you shall not be burned. Hallelujah. Yeah. We shall not be burned. But you know, Satan presents to us a type of a fire, Yisraeli. In every aspect, he tries to mimic or copy Almighty Yahweh. But Satan's fire is not like Almighty Yahweh's fire. And the power that is given unto the enemy, it's only been given to him for a short time anyways by Almighty Yahweh. But you know, the enemy, he's going to come with workings. With miracles, Israel, sure. yes, he's going to produce fire. Yes, sir. Don't you know that, Israel? Yes, Hallelujah. So we must be in the place that we can understand what is the trial of Almighty Yahweh Beautiful. and what is that that Satan tries to emulate, Israel. 
He said, you shall not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon you. Oh, my. The flame. Don't you know that in an intense fire, Israel, you could pass a stick of wood through that, a piece of paper. It's going to get burnt, charred. And there's going to be some kindling even amongst that of the fire, remnants of the fire, embers. But Yahweh is saying, when you walk through the fire, I am with you through that trial, through that test. But it's not going to burn you. And even when you come out of that, there's not going to be any signs that the fire has even touched us just right now. We come through these trials, this tribulation, the fire of Almighty Yahweh. We're going to come forth as pure gold, Yisraya. Pure gold. No, that's not going to be soot on us. Not even a remembrance of the fire of the flame, Yisraya. But all that shall come forth is the praise, all the praises. The obedience is unto Almighty Yahweh. Verse 3, for I am Yahweh, your Abba, your creator. I have made you. You are my children. The Kodesh word of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom. All of Egypt for a people that have transgressed the Torah, the Mishra of Almighty Yahweh. Don't you know he would give this world, this nation for us, Israel? And he will. And he has. Hallelujah. Cush and Sheba for you. Since you were precious in my sight. Don't you know we're precious in the sight of Almighty Yahweh? Even though we're in this fire or we're in the fire, Yisrael Yah. It's a beautiful thing to behold. I don't know if you have seen that. Molten gold, molten silver. It's, it's something to look to behold. It reflects the purity, the color. The vibrance of it. He said, you have been honorable. He said, I have a hava you. Yes. Therefore, will I give Adams, I will give men, yes. I will give nations for you. Yes. How much are we worth unto Almighty Yahweh? Did he give the world nations? I know we don't feel like we're that important, but we are that important unto Almighty Yahweh. You know, it takes work to purify gold. It takes work to purify silver. Sometimes, many times, it takes several processes to get the finished product of which that one that is putting the gold to the trial or to the fire that he wants. Just right here. He said, I will give atoms for you and people for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your zero from the east. So he will bring the zero. From the east? Yes. And gather you from the west. He said, I will say to the north, give them up. Give it up. And the north's going to give up, Israel. This world's not going to hold us back. The nation cannot hold us back. The wicked men and their devices cannot hold us back. Not even the grave, Israel, can hold us back. Hallelujah. He said, give up. And to the south. Don't hold back. Keep not back. But bring the sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the Olam. And everyone that is called by my name. Don't you know we're called by Yah's name? Hallelujah. We are his children. We are his elect. We are precious in his sight. We are his jewels, his gold, his silver. He said... For I have created him for my honor, for his honor, Israel, for praises to him. He said, I have, for, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. Don't you, don't you want Yahweh to make you, to form you? In order to form metal, it has to be put to the heat. Is that not that right, Oxymion? To bend that steel, to bend that iron, it takes heat, Israel. It takes heat. Unless you have a great amount of force, which is not really the best way if you want to mold something, because what happens? It breaks, it peels, it cracks. So you have to apply the heat to it. Yah has to apply the heat to Israel. Yah. He has to turn up the flame. Yes. He has to put us to the test, to the trial, Israel. Yah. Did not Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Did they go through the trial? Did they go through the test? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. 
Let us move on. We will get to that, Israel. But I want there's some things I do want to cover. Hallelujah. Let's move on to Isaiah chapter 48, verse 1. Verse 1 through 12. Don't you know you're chosen for affliction, Israel? Don't you know Yahshua? He was chosen. The Torah of Almighty Yahweh for affliction. From the beginning. That was the purpose. Hallelujah. To face the affliction for us on the stake. Hallelujah. Isaiah 48 verse 1. Hear you this, O house of Yaakov, which are called by the name of Yisra'ya. You are come forth out of the waters of Yehuda, which swear by the name of Almighty Yah, and make mention of Yahweh, the sovereign ruler of Yisra'ya, but not in truth. So we speak his name, we proclaim his praises, but yet not in the rock of truth, Yisrael, nor in Shadik or righteousness. For they call themselves of the Kodesh city and stay themselves upon the sovereign ruler of Yisrael. Do we not say that Yahweh is our rock, Yahshua is our rock, Yisrael? Do we stand firmly on that rock? Are we rooted? Are we grounded? And Yahweh, they say Yahweh of hosts is his name. He said, I have declared the former things from the beginning. And they went forth out of my mouth. Did I talk about the beginning of all things? Of the Olam? Of the beginning of our Munah and the ending of our Munah? And I showed them. I did them suddenly. And they came to pass. When he spoke, it just comes suddenly, Israel. He spoke, and it happened. Verse 4. He said, because I knew that you are obstinate. What is obstinate? You're stubborn? Even from the beginning, I knew you. I knew you would be a stubborn people. And that your neck is as iron sinew. Cords of cable. Rope. Tough. Almost unbreakable, impenetrable. That's our nephew, Israel. Yeah, Yahweh has marked me this night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Are we not his people? Yeah. Did he say that they will be, that they're obstinate, stubborn? Yeah. Your neck is as iron sinew and your brow as brass. I have even from the beginning declared it to you. Before it came to pass, I show it you. Lest you should say, my idol has done them. What is our image? What is our idol? What is this Selim, Yisrael? Are we want to be made in the image of Yahshua HaMashiach? Or are we allowing the world to shape us? Are we allowing the world to make us? Is our vision the American dream, as they say? Is it riches? Is it wealth? Or are our our desires and our wants set up on high in the Melchut, the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh? Where are our hopes? Where are our aspirations, Israel? You have American idols? People praise them. They cry. They bow. They want to be like them. They want to imitate them. The rappers, the people want to imitate them. The politicians, the presidents, the governors. These images that have been set up, this nation and the people, that's what they aspire to be. Doctors, lawyers, to make money, to be wealthy. That is what this image of this world does, Yisrael. Don't you know that's what Nebuchadnezzar implemented? In his kingdom? Don't you know that Yisrael was in bondage there? A mixed people? Yisrael, I will get to that. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But I want to paint this picture as we go, Yisrael. I don't want to leave you all in the blind. I might not finish this tonight. I really don't plan to be before it's long tonight. But I want what you hear. I want you to hold on to it, Yisrael. I want you to understand the nuances and and what we should understand in this hour, Yisrael. This nation has set an image. The world set images. They set cellars. Mm-hmm. No 
for us to bow on to, to worship that image. Hallelujah. Let me move on. He said, my idols had done, done them, and my graven images, and my molten images. Did not Israel, y'all, when we come forth, or we came forth out of Mizraim, and make a golden calf? All of us in this, in this walk of Yahshua, in this, this life, we have made that golden calf, Israel, y'all. We have turned from Almighty Yahweh and made a golden image or a calf or sell them before him. Verse 6. He said, you have heard. See all this, and I will not declare it. He said, he also says, I have known you. I have shown you new things from this time, even sudden things, and you did not know them. Are not things being revealed unto Israel through his Torah? There was Mishva, that in time past we just not, did not have the knowledge or the understanding of them. But yet Yahweh, he's bringing us imuna by imuna, step by step, faith by faith. Suddenly, he drops a revelation in our nephesh, Yisrael. He said, they are created now and not from the beginning, even before the day when you heard them not, lest you should say, behold, I knew that. Oh, I knew them. It is the Ruach that brings us the revelation of Torah, Yisrael. It's not by our own means. It's not by our own intellect. But it's by the Ruach HaKadosh of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 8. Yes, you heard not. Yes, you knew not. Yes, from the time that your ear was not open, for I knew that you would deal very treacherously. We have dealt treacherously with Yahweh. We have not been honest, Israel. Yahweh. We've been thieves. We've been robbers. And we're called a transgressor from the womb. That is me. From my mother's womb, not knowing Yahweh. But yet Yahweh, he knew us, Israel. From the beginning of all things, verse 9. For my name's sake will I defer my anger. I will deflect my anger. And for my praise, I will refrain for, for you, for his praise, for his honor. Don't you know that's why we're not destroyed, Israel? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That I cut you not off. I barak you, Yahweh, that you have not cut me off. I've seen those that have been cut off from the milk, from the wealth of Israel. Yeah. And where are they today, Israel? They're out conforming themselves to the image that this world portrays Israel. Back to the televisions, back to their drunkenness, back to their drugs. Hallelujah. I brought you for keeping me, Yah. It's only the Torah of Yahweh that has kept me. He says in verse 9 again, For my name said, Will I defer, deflect my anger, and for my praise I will refrain for you. That I cut you not off. Behold, I have refined you. How is that? How do we truly know that we are precious in the sight of Yahweh? That he has redeemed us. He has kept us. That he has turned his anger from us. He has not destroyed us, Yisrael. For we were worthy of being wiped out and destroyed. Wiped clean. Why? Let me start from verse 10 again. Behold, I have refined you but not with silver. I have chosen you in the furnace of affliction. I want to be in that furnace, Israel. I want Almighty Yahweh to try me. Hallelujah. You watch what you say, Zarkin, Yaramia. I, I am watching what I say. I'm not speaking of a miss. Why? Because I am chosen of Yah. Yeah. And I know that this is the path that I must take, that I may come yeah. forth as pure gold, Yisrael Yah. So should we resist Yahweh? Should we jump out of the fire? No, Hallelujah. Should we turn our back on him because of the trials or the situations or the small things that we're going through? These are just small trials, Yisrael Yah. We have not gone through nothing yet, Yisrael Yah. Come on. He said, I have chosen you. 
in the furnace of affliction. Yes, sir. You know, I don't understand the full revelation of what that says, but yet I believe it, Israel. Yah. Yah has chosen us in the furnace, in the fire, in the trial, in the heat, Yisrael Yah. Chosen you in the furnace of affliction. Why? In verse 11, for my own sake. We've been paid for with a price, Yisrael Yah. And that's the dom of Yahshua HaMashiach. You're no longer your own. Your life is no longer your own, Yisrael Yah. We belong to Yah. Hallelujah. We belong to Almighty Yahweh. For my own sake, even for my own sake, will I do it. Will I try you? Why well, put you in the furnace? I will turn up the heat. Why? That's all right. For now should my name, for how should my name be polluted? Yes. I will not give honor and my splendor to another. No. He's not going to give his honor or his splendor to Satan, no. to your emotions. Yes. Well, I don't feel like it. We run off like little children, pampering ourselves. Yes. Well, we should just turn to the Torah. For our strength, for our help. Not only that, we have aunt and a hoe. We have Zakay. We have those with an experience. We have those that have tried in this path. It's not so much your age, Israel. It's also the experience. Some of the old heads, and I use that expression, think because they're older they cannot come to a younger ah, or Zakay that is less in age. It don't have to be much. You'd be surprised. There are men in their 60s because someone are in their 50s, mid-50s, late-50s. They think because they have a few years over them that you shouldn't tell them what to do. Yeah. Or they have this, this, uh, this syndrome that a young man should not speak. But Yahweh has elected the young man to speak, just as he has elected the Zarkin Israel. But yet we let pride come before Yah. We let our emotions deflect the judgment of Almighty Yahweh, the heat, the fire. We just flat out get out of the way of Yahweh. We should stay in the way. Hallelujah. We should stay in the way. Verse 12. Hearken to me, O Yaakov and Yisrael, my call. Did I not read earlier that we are called? He has called us by name. He knows our name, Yisrael. I am he, I am the first, and I am the last. Hallelujah. He's the first and the last of my life, Israel. Hallelujah. Moving on, Jeremiah chapter 11. Three and four. I will read, and then I want to start in Daniel. What I'm going to do, we're going to start in the third chapter of Daniel after I read this in Jeremiah. And I will revisit this, Israel, because I do want to, I wanted to back up to chapter two, but I'm not going to do that tonight. Right. We will revisit that concerning um, the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had concerning the head of gold, yes. Yes. the brass. The feet being mingled with the silver and with the clay, I believe, Israel. Yeah. I, I want to look at that more, so I'm not going to bring that out tonight, so we're going to just continue in Daniel chapter 3. Jeremiah 11 and 3 and 4. And I say to them, Thus saith Yahweh, the sovereign ruler of Israel, yeah, Cursed be the man that obeys not the words of this covenant. What is the covenant? It's not Yahshua, Hamashiach, our covenant? Between Abba, Yahweh, did not he stand in proximity, hallelujah, between us and almighty Yahweh? Cursed be the man that obeys not the words of this covenant, which I have commanded your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Mizraim, from the iron furnace. What's the purpose of a furnace, Israel? It's to purify. It's to mold. It's to heat so a piece of metal can be structured 
That was the purpose of Yisrael and Mizraim, Yisrael. And that is our purpose at this time, to be tried, to be molded into what Yahweh wants us to be. Out of Egypt, from the iron furnace, saying, obey my voice. He's saying to us tonight to obey his voice, Yisrael. And do them, what? His covenants, his commandments, his mitzvah, his Torah. According to all that I command you, so shall you be my people, and I will be your almighty one. Hallelujah. Yahweh is our almighty one, Yisrael. As long as we stay, we walk in his covenants, his statutes, his commandments, his Torah, and his Ruah. Let us move on to Daniel chapter 3, verse 1 I want to begin reading. Concerning Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image. He made a selah, Yisrael, of gold, whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth, therefore, thereof, six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the providence of Babylon, or in the high place, or the central location where all could be seen, the high place, Yisrael. That is what this nation does. They set things up on high pinnacles, men, women, stars, Hollywood, set them up on a, pit, up on a pedestal. When they're not worth bush in the eyes of Almighty Yahweh. But they set them up as an image of gold to be honored, to be desired. Why? Why do you think they do that? Because they, they know they can sell anything in this nation to make a profit. So they sell it. They sell their images. They sell their wares. They sell the devices. Verse 2. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes and the governors and the captains, the judges and the treasurers, the counselor, the sheriffs, to come to the get dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. When we, uh, I'm not saying we, but in this nation, in this nation, Yisrael, what did they do in the election time? They set up a man, they pick a man, they set him up on a, uh, on a pedestal, do they not? The president? Do they not, Yisrael? Yeah. Do they set them up? Yeah. That they could be praised? Anointed? Yeah. Let us move on. Verse 3, mid verse 3. We're gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And they stood before this image, this cellar, that Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Then a herald cried aloud. They had one with a shofar or an instrument or vocally to cry out. What was the purpose of that? to get the attention of those. Maybe there were some that did not hear or did not hear the proclamation yeah. or this image. Yeah. So a sound went forth. Mm -hmm. The only sound we should hear, Yisrael, Yah, is the voice of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. Yeah. We should hear the sound of the shofar. Yeah. That's what we should hear, Yisrael, Yah. But yet this nation continuously hurls out sounds yeah. to catch our attention, to derail us, to detour us, Yisrael, Yah. They take our mind off of the Torah of the Mishra of Almighty Yahweh and his path. He said, to you, it is commanded, O people, O nations. Did it say nation or nations? Nation. So it had to be just more than one nation in that kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. Yeah. O people, O nations, and languages. You mean to tell me there's more than one language, Israel? Yeah. Is it not more than one language in this nation throughout the world? Yeah. Not only that, but it's more than one language amongst Israel, yeah. and it should not be. I, my mind goes back to a message I preached a while back concerning what Yahweh intended from the beginning. And it talks about this in the books that are not written here in the King James Version, but how everything had one language. Was not at the making of Babel, that tower, was not everyone in one language? That was the order of Yah. But because man took that and corrupted it, Yahweh had to bring in diverse languages to confound them that they stopped what they was doing. See, because the power of the one language 
one understanding, one mind. They all had singleness of eye. Yahweh knew that what they started, it was going to be complete. And he had to stop it. You mean to tell me Yahweh had to stop man? Sure he had to stop man. Why? Because from the beginning he intended one language. We as Israel, y'all, should have one language. We should understand what the Torah said. Not my idea, not what I think, but what Torah says. What Mishvah says. That is commanded of us. So there should not be a multiplicity of languages amongst the house of Yisrael. We should be able to talk to one another, understand one another, Yisrael. There's so much confusion in this hour. There should only be one way. Is there not only one Imunah? Why are there so many diverse Imunahs or faiths or people say, I have this faith, I believe this, I want to go in that direction. I believe Yah spoke to me. I believe, quote, unquote, Jesus Christ spoke to me. And I believe he does. But Yahweh, he only has one voice. And we shall all understand it, Israel. The judgment of Almighty Yahweh. How Yahweh presents himself unto Israel. Verse 5. That at that time, you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbuck, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music. You fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. Do not the nations of the world bow down, fall down before the kings of the world, before their pop stars, their movie stars, writers of books? They show them honor. Great emulation. People by the thousands, by the millions. Yes, yes. But yet, we as a nation, we don't go forth with that same spontaneous strength and vigor for Almighty Yahweh, Israel. Come on, Israel. Yes. The world show us all the time. They show honor to their governors, to their princes, mm -hmm. to their kings, to their rulers. Yes. So should we, Israel, to the Zakane, to the elders. Yahweh has appointed them, has appointed us, Yisrael, to lead his house. Verse 6. And whoso fell of not, fall of not down to worship, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. The same hour. The same hour in which the sound went forth, the sackbot, the, so, the dulcimer. The same hour, not the next day, not two weeks down the road. Believe me, Nebuchadnezzar had watchmen. He had people out there watching. Why? Because this is a type of what we experience in this hour, Yisrael. Nebuchadnezzar was trying to cause everybody, by means of the furnace, to do as he did. To transgress the Torah. Was not Ephraim or Yisrael yes. Yahweh's elect mm -hmm. in the Melchut in the kingdom? Yes. Do not Yahweh want us, command us to obey his commandments, Yisrael Yah? Yes. Let you know there were those at that time that bowed, that was of the nation of Yisrael Yah? Yes. Let you know that, Yisrael yes. There was only a few that stood, or warriors that stood at this time. Hallelujah. We should be these warriors, Yisrael. Hallelujah. We should be your warriors in this, this time. Because there's so many images that are predicted, that are made, that are shown, viral, television, internet, to take the mind, to occupy the mind, to keep it from Torah, Yisrael. And you'd be surprised, it's, it's the smallest of things. It's, not, it's more than just the visual, what you think you see, but it's not what you don't see. Yeah. It's a tool of the enemy, Israel. Yeah. Not only that, the radio is a tool of the enemy. Yeah. Why? To conform Israel yeah, to this image. That's what Nebuchadnezzar was doing. To conform a people to an image. Now, before this, just to give you a caption, the same king had a vision from Almighty Yahweh of the judgment. But Yahweh's judgment did not change his course. Why? Because Yahweh, uh, he plants the course of the kings. Yahweh plants the course of Obama, of Bush, 
whom, whomever, of every nation. Yahweh appoints the court, the course. So no matter what kind of judgment go forth, Yahweh has a course that that man is going to go through or go through Yisrael. So what, what, should, what should we do as a nation? We should understand what Yahweh is doing at this time. And we should not allow our lives to be taken. No, we should not be casting ballots for Obama or these other political figures. They're Salem's Yisrael. And what do they do? They sell us anything. Like I was saying, their, their mouths are almost a prayer book. Those men can say, speak a flat out lie, and there are people that will back them up. They sell them anything. They're idols, Yisrael. They're the images of gold that are set up. And the vision that Nebuchadnezzar had, there was an image that was placed before him that had a, a head of gold, Yisrael. And it was destroyed by the rock. Not just any rock, not just any stone, Yisrael. I, I will get to that. I will get to that. I want to look at that some more. Let's continue on. Yahshua is going to bring this down. Yisrael, he's going to destroy it all. There's no mixing in the Torah, Yisrael. He's not going to mix his gold with clay because you cannot mix gold and clay, silver and clay. The substance you should get is going to break. It's going to fold on. It's not going to withstand the trial or the test, Yisrael. But you know, that's what Yahweh is doing that for us right now. He's trying to get out the dirt, Yisrael. He's revealing the dirt. That is what the furnace is for. The iron furnace and Mizraim. This furnace that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are entered or have entered into this Raya. We're in the furnace, Yisraya. We're in this furnace. And it has not gotten hot yet, Yisraya. Just a little warm. We, we can stand it. Just a little warm, but it will get hotter. Hallelujah. Verse 7. Therefore... At that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, and all kind of music, all the people, all the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. That's what Satan does, Israel. He sets up an image. For us to bow down to. Every day there's an image. When you get up in the morning, there's an image. If not the image of Yahshua, yeah. if it's not the memoration of his Torah and our love, it's an, Im it's an image from Satan. Just as Dawid said, he will not set anything that is defiled, that will defile him before his eyes, Israel. We shouldn't do that, Israel. We should not do that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 8. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused Yisrael, Yehuda. Verse 9. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. He says, You, O king, has made a decree. A proclamation. You have made an order. That every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, and the dulcimer, all kinds of music. Now, you got to understand, all these things were played in unison. It was a luring thing. I don't believe it was something that make you cover your ears. I believe when the ears heard it, it tickled the ears. It drew interest. It drew the people. And to the court where the image was, Israel. That's what Satan does. That's what the enemy does. He makes things nice to the ears. Hallelujah. By the tickling of the ears of many nations, many people should come to destruction, Israel. That's all these men do. They tickle your ears. They tickle your fancy, as they say. They tell you what you want to hear. The flute, the sackbut, the sorcery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music. They shall fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoso falleth not down to worship, that he should be cast into the midst of the fiery, burning fiery furnace, Israel. Now don't you know, Israel, because we are Kodesh, we are a peculiar people. We have been chosen of Almighty Yahweh. As our king, Benjamin, says so many times, we should not look like the world. 
The image that the world puts up, we should not want to be conformed to that. No matter what it is, whether it's a picture, whether it's a way of speaking, a way of walking, a way of dressing, we should not hold fast to that, Yisrael. If the world goes to the left, we should go to the right. We should go the opposed opposite of what the world does, Yisrael. So here it is. The music has gone forth, and there's a chosen few that stood on the promises of Almighty Yahweh, that believed in the Torah, that knew the judgments of Almighty Yahweh, rather face the furnace than the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. Because they knew in that same judgment, even though that judgment breaks down, it destroys, it burns, it purges, it also builds. It also allows one to grow, to be stronger, Yisrael. Verse 12. There are certain valiant Yahudian warriors whom you have set over the affairs of the providence of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He said, these valiant warriors, O king, have not regarded you. They serve not your gods. So we serve the gods of the nations, of the world, Israel, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. The golden image that he has set up, Israel. Beautiful to the sight. I wonder what it, what it represented or what it looked like. I wonder if it has something to do with the chapter. You could go there in chapter 2 and read about what Nebuchadnezzar saw. Maybe that image was somewhat of what he built at that time, Israel. Yes. A representative of his kingdom, of his power, of what was given to him at the time. I believe that's what that image represented, that he put up, Israel. Have not regarded you, they serve not your gods, nor worship the golden image, the Selim, which you have set up. Verse 13. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage, and his anger, and fury, he commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now remember, these are men that he put over the providence, the governing, the wealth, the industry. Of his kingdom. So he knew perfectly who these men were. He knew what they stood for. And he knew that they honored Almighty Yahweh. You will find that in chapter 2. Then Nebuchadnezzar, his rage and his fury, he commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they brought these valiant warriors before the king. These men of renown, these men of strength. Notice it said valiant warriors, Israel. They didn't turn. They didn't break down. They were willing to die for what whom they believed in. Yeah. Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. Verse 14. Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said to them, is it not true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? You know, this is what we should aspire to be, Israel. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Like Yahshua HaMashiach, to be conformed unto his image, his likeness, to walk in the same path he walked in, Yisrael. That we know we're going to be tried with, tried with the same things he was tried with. But you know, he was forsaken. You don't think he felt that in his love, Yisrael? But we think when someone turned their back on us, and that, that is such a hurtful thing, and it is a hurtful thing. But we also have to remember Yahshua. We also have to remember Yahshua. We, think, we don't think Yahshua went through things as a child and as a young man. We don't think, you know, we take so much in ourselves and, and gloat on what we've gone through and we have done that we cannot come to the light of what Torah shows to Yahshua HaMashiach, our example, Yisrael. He was tried by every means we are tried in this hour, yet he overcame. We're overcomers in Yahshua HaMashiach, Yisrael. Yeah. We've been washed in that same dawn. We have the same power. We should have the same testimony yeah. in our lives, Yisrael. Yeah. That no matter what comes, hell or high water, all the furnace, yeah. that we should stand. Beautiful. Hallelujah. Let us move on, Yisrael. Verse 14. Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, 
Do you not serve my gods? Have anyone ever asked you that question, Israel? Yeah? Maybe not in that same meaning, that same, you know, like the, like the scripture is expressing, but yet the same way. Who do you worship? What are you doing? Why do you dress like that? They notice you out of the crowd. What, what are you so happy about? You don't have to have an expression on your face. What is it? It's the glow of the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh dwelling in Israel. That's what it is. So they know that we're different. They recognize that. We don't dress like them. We don't act like them. We should not look like them, Israel. No worship the golden image which I have set up. Now, if you be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the shofar, the flute, the harp, the sackbook, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Don't you know that's why, they, that's why the world make the images, Israel? I know I'm repeating myself. That's why the world make these images. It's for Israel. It's not so much for the world, but it's, it's a trap for Israel. This was a trap for Israel in this kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar. That's all it was. A trap. And he felt that the furnace would detour everyone. He wasn't looking for, he knew, he knew where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood, Israel. But he thought maybe, maybe the furnace, maybe if I try them, that uh, they'll conform to the image that I have set up. This kingdom that I am trying to build. Maybe I can mingle these nations, these tongues, into one powerful kingdom. He could not do it. Why? Because there was an elect of Yah there. Only Yahweh builds his house. He's not leaving it up to Nebuchadnezzar. He's not leaving it up to the United States. He's not leaving it to Russia, China, to build his people, his nation. He's doing it himself, Israel. But we must understand that we're in the furnace. Those of you that are listening by via live stream, no matter where you are, the four corners of this world, this is the purpose of us being where we are in this day. Though we are scattered among the Gohing on the nations, those that worship the images, the Nebuchadnezzar throughout this world, the spirit of Nebuchadnezzar, Israel. Don't bow. Don't allow the fires or them uh, um, trying to detour us or threaten us to turn from Torah. Don't turn from Torah, Israel. Do what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego do, did. Hallelujah. Now, this is not a fable. It's not a pretty little story, bedtime story that we read to our children, Israel. This is the trial of Israel right here. Hallelujah. Now, if you be, if you be ready at, at what time, you hear the sad back, shit, I'm sorry, getting tongue twisted. If you be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sap book, the sorcery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, he's saying, well, will it be to you? But if you worship not, you will be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And who is that almighty one that shall deliver you out of my hands? Now, he's mocking Yah. The world mocks Yah, Yisrael Yah. Nebuchadnezzar mocked Yah. Even though before this chapter... Daniel revealed the revelation of the dream that he had, yet the heart of the king is still against Yah. It's just another Pharaoh. That's all he is, just right, Yah. This is another example of Mizraim being in that furnace. Hallelujah. Verse 16. Now, I, I like this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar. I like to see his face when he said that when they said this to him. We are not careful. Not careful. I'm not gonna mash my words. I know that you are the king. I know your throne is set above your kingdom. I know you are the ruler, but I also know who set you on the throne. I'm not careful. Why are we so careful, Yisrael, Yah, amongst the heathen, amongst the world, amongst those that deny Yahshua HaMashiach? It don't matter who it is. Friend, foe, family, it doesn't matter. But yet we're so careful. We want to walk so gingerly. We don't want to step on nobody's toes. Now we should cut them off. 
We shall use the two-edged sword of Almighty Yahweh. The Torah of Almighty Yahweh. But yet we're so pious and, and, so, and so careful amongst the wicked world. But here Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say, all right, you, you crossed the line, Nebuchadnezzar. We're not careful in what we say or what we're about to say unto you. We're going to speak the truth. We're going to speak Mishvah. We're going to speak in Muna. We're going to show you where we stand. And they stood on a solid rock, and they were rooted and grounded in the Torah. Yisrael, we should be rooted and grounded in the Torah, Yisrael. If we're not, then we will turn away. We will buy. We will be conformed to this image that the world builds, this golden image. It's going to be broken, Yisrael. The rock will break it. The kingdom of this Nebuchadnezzar shall come down. Remind me of the song, Say it in your kingdom. It's coming down. You've been building your kingdom all over this land. But it's coming down, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's coming down. Why? Because it's mixed. Hallelujah. That's true. Hallelujah. Lies. It's all mixed, Yisrael. Verse 17. Verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego actually said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. All the other matters... You set us over, king. We obeyed you. But we're not going to transgress the Torah. You set us over people, over your wealth, over your governing. We did so, but we did not transgress Torah. So even in this matter, O Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful. Verse 17. If it be so, Yahweh our Almighty, whom we serve. Did he say who we serve? Who do we serve? Do we know who we serve? Do we know he's able? Yahweh is able, Yisrael, to keep us. Do we know that he is able to take us into the furnace, to keep us in the furnace, and to bring us out of the furnace, Yisrael? For it be so, Yahweh, our Almighty, whom we serve, is able, Yakal, he is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. Don't we understand that Yahweh, he's able to deliver us from our trials, through our testing? Do we have to go through these things? Yes. Because Yahweh has ordained it. If he didn't ordain it, it would not be so. For to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hands. Don't you know that the trials, the tribulations, Yisrael, that we are tried by, that we are tested, that we endure, those of you that are listening, that you're enduring, Yisrael. Yes, yes. It's, it's, it's just Yahweh perfecting us. That's all it is, Yisrael, yes. to make us, to deliver us. That seems a strange way to deliver people is through trials. Yes. But it's strange to the ears of, of flesh, but this is the way of Yah. And it's been the way of Yahweh from the beginning of all things, Israel. Yeah. If it be so, Yahweh Almighty, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hands, O king. He knew that either way, whether by the furnace or whatever was planted, Yahweh would deliver him out of the hands of the king. Verse 18. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, your idols, this Salem, this image, what you have placed before the people, we have placed before the nation, Israel. We should not bow down. We should not bow down, Israel, to this nation, what they do, what they say, what they try to feed us, encourage us to partake of, unclean things. That's what the enemy does. We should not be a people that partake of unclean things, Israel. Whether it's what we consume, whether it's what we wear, or what we do, Israel, It should not be unclean things of this image. Because it's unto the gods. It's unto Satan. The kingdom of Satan. That's all it is, Israel. Nor worship, pay homage to the golden image that you have set up. We're not going to pay homage to this image you have set up in your mind, Nebuchadnezzar, your desires, 
what you want to do. We're not going to bow down to the image you have created. Verse 19. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. And the form of his visage or his expression on his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spoke and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more that it was want to be heated. So they had a measure or a limit for this furnace to be heated. What was the furnace for? What was the furnace, furnace for, Israel? To burn, get rid of waste, purification of gold. It was big enough to put three men into. What was the purpose of the furnace? Hallelujah. You understand what Yahweh's purpose is, Israel? This furnace? Do we know what Yahweh is doing this hour? Do we understand you, Israel? Am I just speaking words or are we grasping what Torah is saying, Israel? It's the plan of Yahweh to enter into the furnace. Mizraim was just a furnace. Nebuchadnezzar, it was just a furnace, Israel. Every trial of Yaakov or Yisrael, he brought him in and out of nations. They was taken by nations to go in repeatedly, uh, repeatedly, Israel. Why? Because step by step, Yahweh was forming. He was making this go unto what he wants, Israel. And he's not finished yet. He's not done yet. He's not finished with me, with me yet, Israel. Hallelujah. He knows what I need. He divides the flame of fire. Hallelujah. Verse 20. And he commanded that the most mighty, valiant warriors that were in his army, to bind Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and to cast them into the burning fire. Yes. Most mighty, valiant warriors. I wonder what they look like, Israel. Visualize. We see men of great mass, even in this hour. Of course, men of them, most of them, all of them really, they're drugged up. But can you imagine warriors, those that have been in the battle, been in the fight, experience, no fear, strong men. Strong men. There was his warriors of valiancy. His most valiant warriors that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them in to the burning fiery furnace. These valiant warriors were bound in their coats, their hosting, their hats, and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Yeah. Talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they weren't stripped of what they was wearing, what they had in their possessions, just right, y'all, yeah. when they were cast in the furnace. We as a nation, as a people, we're not, Yahweh is not going to allow the spirit of Nebuchadnezzar to have his Torah that is written in our left yeah. to be stripped away from us. He's not going to allow our loins that is girdled about with his mishvah, the two-edged sword, yeah. and our sheath. Our heads being covered. Yes, yes. Yeah. Even the soles on our feet. He's not going to allow the world to strip us of that, Israel. He's not going to allow us to go into these trials naked without a way to endure or to come forth, Israel. Yeah. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, all their garments, they had their garments, or whatever they had in their possession. All of it was thrown into the midst of the furnace. Hallelujah. Way. I got a few more verses, Israel, y'all, that I'm going to read as I bring this to a close. So much truth in, in this, Israel, y'all, so as it is in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 22. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, it says that the flame of the fire slew those valiant warriors that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It slew the warriors, consumed them, burnt them. There was nothing left, Israel. This is the fire of Almighty Yahweh. No matter how mighty we may seem as we stand in our flesh, resisting Almighty Yahweh, 
If we have that kind of ruah, we're not going to stand in the intensity of the trials that are coming, Israel. If we have doubt, and we don't stand on the mishmash of Almighty Yahweh, we're not going to stand in this fire. You think those warriors cared what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego thought or what they did or who they served? No. They were the king's warriors. But yet those fires consumed them. Were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were they consumed by those same flames? Not a hair was singed on their heads, Israel. Verse, three, verse 24. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king, he was astonished and rose up in haste and spake. He spoke and said to his counselors, did not we cast three valiant warriors bound into the midst of the fire? One there only three? That's how many I counted. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they said, they answered and said to the king, True, O king. There was only three cast in there. Everyone behold it. Beheld. What was taking, taking, um, taking course, Israel. In verse 25, he says this. He answered and said, and I, I like this, I love it all, I have it all, Israel. He answered and said, Lo, I see four valiant warriors loose. Four. So there was a fourth man in the fire. Hallelujah. Where's that fourth man today, Israel? Don't you know Yahshua Hamashiach is with us? Did not I read that Yahweh, he promised, he made a covenant that when you go through the waters, it will not overtake you. The rivers, they will not overflow you. And when you walk, it's through the flame of fire. You will not be consumed, Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not only that, there's a fourth man, Yahshua HaMashiach, that walks with us. So at any time you feel like you're by yourself, Israel, you're not alone. Yahshua HaMashiach. He is with us. Yahweh's Torah is written in our lips. His Ruach is with us, Yisrael. So let us, just for a time, just for a season, Yisrael, it's not a long time. This life is just but a, a breath. It's just a myth that you see it, then it's gone. When the air is cold enough, you go out, you blow your breath. You see the vapors in the air, they expand the contract. You can see the mist as it comes forth out of your mouth. But over just a short period of time, it starts to ebb away. You don't see it anymore. That's what this life is like. So why would we not want to endure this short time for Yahshua, HaMashiach, to go through what he went through, through to endure the flames of the fire, these trials, for him, Yisrael, we should consider him and all he has done for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has made the way plain and simple for us, Yisrael. Yeah. And he answered and said, Lord, I see four valiant warriors yeah. loose, walking in the midst of the fire. And they have no hurt. Yeah, no hurt. And the form of the fourth was like unto the son of Almighty Yahweh. How did he understand really what he was seeing, Yisrael? Did he understand really what he was saying as seeing this fourth man? Verse 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near unto the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High Yahweh, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth out of the midst of the fire. And the princes and the governors and the captains and the kings, the counselors, being gathered, to, excuse me, being gathered together, saw these valiant warriors upon whose bodies the fire had no power. Don't we know that this fire has no power? It's the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. It's the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, Israel. Yes, yes, yes. Satan, he has his flame. Yes. But it is the Torah of Yahweh that keeps us, Israel. Don't you know the, the saying? It's a true saying, you must fight fire with fire. Hallelujah. But there's a certain special aspect of Yah's fire to the Kedushan. 
Not only does that same fire try us, purify us, it also keeps us. It preserves us. It's not to destroy us, Israel, but to make us all that Yahweh wants us to be. A few more scriptures, I'll bring this to an end. So they will not hurt Yisrael. It said, neither were they coach changed. It says that the hair of the head, in verse 27, were not singed, nor was the smell of the fire passed on them. And one thing we must take into mind, Yisrael, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the mind, the left, the nephesh, was pure before they even reached the fire. Hallelujah. Before they even reached this trial. There's a scripture that I did read concerning um, the fiery trials, Yisrael. It should not be a strange thing, the fiery trial that should come upon us. We're going to enter into that trial, Yisrael, but yet Yahweh should bring us forth as pure gold. We not should be hurt, sins, or not even the smell of the trial, the fire should be upon us. Why? Because Yahweh, he makes us pure. He knows how to divide the flame of fire. Last few verses. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which spake anything amiss against Yahweh, the Almighty of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in Abednego, shall be cut into pieces, and the houses shall be made a dung hill, which there is no other that is mightier than Almighty Yahweh, that shall deliver them of this sort. Verse 30, the last verse. And the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. It is Yahweh, Yisrael, that brings us towards the trial and the trial and brings us out of the trial of the furnace. It is he that divides the flame. It is he that tries us, Yisrael, and it is he that, is, that keeps us. Hallelujah. I do pray that this message has been an inspiration to your love, Yisrael, that you have garnered, been able to retrieve something from this tonight. Hallelujah. Let us all stand in the strength of Almighty Yahweh as warriors, valiant warriors, ready to face tomorrow. Hallelujah. For there is a trial that shall await all of Israel. Abba Yahweh, we do barak you for this night, the scripture, truth that you have given unto us, Abba Yahweh. We do ask Yahweh that your Torah will continue to burn as a fire in our nephesh, Almighty Yahweh. As your Torah in our bones, that we cannot be still, that we must speak, that we must speak of your Torah, your Mishra, what you have done for us. And all things we do, Barak, you, we ask that you would take those that have come from near and afar home safely, that your medicine will be a camp around them. Almighty Yahweh, and as you will awaken us again on the morrow, in the morning, Yisrael, we shall barak you for all things. In the mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do declare, hallelujah, 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 Yahweh, hallelujah, Yahweh Barak, Yisrael, hallelujah.